Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match between Stakhanov and Elliot N. Elliot N is the Grecan player we see right now in the East, and Stakhanov is playing. Or she hasn't decided yet, he's just mentioning his tournament game, playing Vekir! And finally, we see Vekir in this tournament. I'm very glad because Vekir has gotten a lot of boosts in the last patch because they had a lot of issues early, and now they're being given a lot of tender loving care. Most specifically, at the very early game, they get as Shinbeer, along with the Tethbeer and Zionbeer that they already had. Shinbeers are able to build foundations as well as turn into any of the air or pilot any of the air vehicles that Gre that Vekir are able to field. This is incredibly useful because Shinbeer are able to build basically the expansions of Grekum. Vekir. Expansions of Vekir. And so not Gre sorry, there's been so many Grekums in this game, I feel like everyone's playing Grekum now. But no, they're not. Only Elliot N in this case is playing Grecum, and Elliot N is going for... Actually, it looks like he's going for an aggressive build with four Octos, none of them set to build RPs. He may just be building the Octos quickly, and then... No, he's not! As I originally said, he is attacking with the RPs, and it looks like Sakhanov and Elliot N are at about the same time. Both of them are right... Well, actually, Sakhanov is fast-forwarding, and Elliot N is at the present. Elliot N is also fast-forwarding, so both players are fast-forwarding, trying to get to each other fairly quickly. Sakhanov, about five seconds up from here, is about to see the attack coming in from the Octos, the Octos are going to be hitting... Actually, he's matched up with Elliot N, so both of them synced up. Shinbeer will encounter the Octos, and it looks like Sakhanov is actually going back in time to try to correct the Shinbeer. He knows that Elliot N is playing Grekum now. He doesn't need to worry too much about what to do with the Shinbeer. He's going to keep it back in the base because he needs that. Shinbeer are also detectors, which is invaluable against CISO because of the ATHCs. Not as useful early game against Grekum because Grekum's main cloaker is the Pharopod, and the Pharopod is incredibly powerful against ground. So as a result, the Shinbeers tend to die against Pharopods. However, another boost is that Foundations are able to detect Cloaked. Yeah, there's been a lot of buffs, like I said. The last big buff is that Vector units were always able to upgrade Skip Teleport. All vehicles are upgrade, upgrade to Self Teleport. And now they can upgrade Self Teleport without upgrading Gate Tech first. But if you upgrade Gate Tech, you get Self Teleport for free on all units. Which is a very useful buff. So there's been a lot of buffs, a lot of changes. So vector has been a lot more viable. So it's kind of, as you say, is testing it out. He's going for a rather early depot. And here we have the Octos coming in from Elliot N that were coming in before. And now Sakhanov is in a much better pl place to fight them. He has two Shin Beers, or two Tet Beers, sorry. And a Zion Beer and a Shin Beer. And actually, no, two Zion Beers as well. So he has two Zion Beers, a Shin Beer, and a Tet Beer. Actually, the Shin Beer is dead now, fortunately. And so are the Tet Beers. So the Octos are dealing a lot of damage. The Octos have actually gotten in successfully. And I'm not sure exactly what Sakhanov is going to try to do. He's going to set out another. Yeah, there's Shinbeer, okay. Another Zionbeer is coming out as well to help out. Well, Elliot N, about a minute up from here, is still focusing on the Octos. He hasn't really echoed it up very much. He does have more LC, but he his Octo Attack is permanent. It doesn't look like he's echoing it out, but he might be. He's going back to when he actually set up the Octo Attack in the first place, and it looks like he might very well be echoing it out. But they haven't been constructed yet, so it's rather difficult to tell. And indeed, he is, in fact, echoing out that attack, so... The attack for the Octos will have never happened, ultimately. Stakhanov is still having to deal with it, though, because the Red Time Wave still carries the attack having happened. So Stakhanov still has to deal with it when it happens, but he won't ultimately have to deal with it. It is still a bit of a distraction, though, and does give Elliot N some initiative against Stakhanov. Stakhanov does have his depot. He doesn't have any tech up yet, but he has plenty of resources to get both vehicles and tech. If he wanted to get auto defense to help fend off Farapaz, that will be invariably coming. And if he wants to help fight off any further Octos, he may not know the Octos aren't coming, and pretty much safe bet to have some defenses. At the very least, he's going to help you out against the Pharopods. So, right now he's getting a Foundation. The Foundation's healing up his infantry that managed to survive that battle. Of course, like I said, that battle will ultimately not have happened. The Red Time Wave here is carrying the battle not having had happened. Elliot N is, of course, now focusing entirely on economy, getting his South Expansion built up. He's getting North Expansion built up, so he's got his entire the east side of the map entirely controlled by him. Most of it on LC, very little on QP. He has one R RP on QP at the top, one RP on QP at the south, and he has just jumping around, trying to make sure he has everything he needs, getting the Octos here that he had to... Actually, it looks like another set of four Octos here. He's not really doing anything with them yet. He does have a Seppi. He seemed to have a Faro and a Seppi going out to make an independent triad, but they don't seem to be doing that right now. That must be happening later on along the timeline. Whilst Kanov, about now 15 seconds up from Elliot N, has built about seven seven Zion Pulsers, sending them directly into the base of Elliot N very quickly. He doesn't seem to be upgrading Skip Teleport on them. He's simply going for the direct attack. He's jumped back about 30 seconds to apparently get his imagery, double-check how his imagery are set up. 
He has a lot of Zion Pulsers already in there, getting more inventory, turning into Zion Pulsers. There we are. Now all the Zion Gears are turning into Zion Pulsers, very quickly building up. Now he has eight Zion Pulsers, and another foundation coming up, presumably for an aer aerial control center, and maybe for a Bastion, but it's very likely for an aerial control center, because that would allow him to upgrade air to back up the tech that he has, or the back up the force that he has now, to get himself the tech up. And here is so the Octos. The Octos are coming in, actually, from Elliot and More Octos coming in that were already set up. That was the Octos that we saw before the eight Octos here. Coming up for defense, come for offense, and the Reef has upgraded advanced structures as well. Aspire is being built. No domes being built, however, for Elliot and he's not going for that. Asepi coming in with the Octos. The Octos are being attacked very heavily, but it looks like Elliot and is coming back to re-micro his forces. He knows that there is Zion Pulses coming, and he wants to make sure to avoid them. So Khanov, on the other hand, has actually backed up a bit because he knows there's Octos as well, and he probably doesn't want to get a little Zion Pulsers killed because he doesn't have Skip Teleport on them right now. The upgrade's here, but he doesn't have it upgraded, so... They can't teleport, he does an aerial control center, so the ACC will be able to go forward. And as mentioned, Stakhanov is a player who is usually very adept at using the timeline effectively, or at least as knowing how to use the timeline, thinking of really neat strategies around. So it'll be very interesting to see how he uses that, if he uses that. Right now, his Zion Pulse are doing a very good job holding off the Octos. Only one Zion Pulse are dying ultimately, and Zion Beer as well. Faro as well getting completely destroyed, so Stakhanov is actually attacking very directly, doing a lot of damage with the direct attack. Elliot N has built a couple domes now. And he'll probably be firing off the beams as well to help fend off the Zion Pulses here. And his Octos were actually retreated ultimately, so Sakhanov will not actually have to deal with them until he gets to the base. So the Octos are trying to get a defender's advantage, attack near the domes, but that's still not going to be helping out too much. It's still not enough. The Zion Pulses are going to be able to completely obliterate what's going on here. The domes will be able to deal a lot of damage. I'm not, I am very surprised that Elliot is not using the dome beam right now. It'll be very handy. Getting, there we are, and there's the dome beam. So one of the Zion Pulses has been destroyed. But the Octos are taking a long time to get there. The Faros, what we really needed right now are some Faros. Admittedly, Octos are very powerful against a small number of Zion Pulsers. Against a large number of Zion Pulsers, Octos do not do as well because the splash damage just completely obliterates the entire Octo Force before they, before they can approach. So, right now, eight more Octos coming up to try to deal with this. But the Zion Pulsers are doing a lot of damage. So Hana's point of view is about the same time, he has dealt a lot of damage. He's trying to just micromanage this around as well. He also has air units coming in, he has a Tetsuitra coming in. Just to double check, make sure that there's nothing coming in, no fire pods or anything. Tet creatures, however, do not detect. You need a Shin Torture for that. They do, however, hit air very effectively. They are interceptor units, so very effective against air. So it's kind of right now is doing very well destroying Elliot's base. Elliot, on the other hand, has jumped back about a minute. And Lifto's Arcticus try to put it from the looks of it in a slightly well, slightly more northerly position, probably to get it out of the way of the Zion Pulsers, but it looks like D beams are coming in as well. Beams will be dealing some damage to the Zion Pulsers. Kill one of the Zion Pulsers, but still another Zion Pulser. Well, another half dozen Zion Pulsers coming in. And those will be able to deal enough damage to take care of all of these defenses. More Octos coming in, like I said. The Octos we saw here before, they will not be able to do enough damage to deal with these. And, and Tet Churches as well coming in from the north. However, the Zion Pulsers have been all sent down to the south. So it looks like the Zion Pulsers will not be able to do a lot of damage to the Octos. The Octos are trying to retreat into the base, get a bit of a defender's advantage, but there are no domes. There's no defenses. There are Seppies coming up, though. They'll be very effective against the Ted Searchers, but unfortunately, completely ineffective against the Zion Pulsers. Zion Pulsers will also destroy them too quickly. What will be best right now is either Faropods, although he may not have the resources, or possibly Faros, because Faros do have range. They will be able to attack the Zion Pulsers before they all die, but it seems like it's too little too late. This is very near the Unplayable Pass. More Octos coming up to try to help fight against these Zion Pulsers. Mass Force Zion Pulsers. So kind of as well jumping back. Jump back about a minute and a half, just to Double check his moves, double check what he's doing. He doesn't have any, actually any tech at all this game. He's completely gone tech-free, just focusing entirely on his aerial units, getting a Shin Torture as well, because he doesn't know if Elliot has gone towards the future, Chrono Forward Backs and Faro Pods. That would be actually a pretty decent idea, but right now, unfortunately for Elliot he is actually carrying his own death. He's a time with carrying his own destruction. If he were to jump forward slightly, he'd be able to actually help himself out, maybe maybe get Chrono Forward and save his own base. It would be possibly a paradox, but it'd at least help out. But unfortunately, no, Elliot is jumping back in the green time, but will be carrying his demise if he's not careful. I'm not sure what he can do. He has a Sebi Pod on the ground trying to deal with this, but unfortunately, it's on the ground, so it's able to be hit by the Zion Pulsers. He needs to be able to lift it up and get it, and it looks like Elliot is conceding the game. Very short match from the looks of it, if Elliot is in fact conceding. And Shin Church are coming in as well to help out, help with bombing, and just also help with detection, like I said, in case in case a Far from the future were to come in from Elliot N. That would be dealing a lot of damage, but it looks like. It looks like Sakhanov has managed to really pull Vecchio up and use them to great effect in this match, doing a very good job attacking Greco Forces of Elliot. And yes, Sakhanov has won! So, well done, Sakhanov, and thanks for watching!
have a good night.